Hi, welcome here at Mobile World Congress 2023. And I'm here with Jonathan Hopkinson and your digital transformation consultant at Huawei. And you know everything about this transformation at operators. Talking about this transformation, it's already a term that's used for years, mm. 10 years. Why is it so important right now for operators and how do you bring value to these operators? Well, I think there's two, there's two reasons why it's becoming so important now. First of all, I think we all know we live in an increasingly digital and intelligent world. The way we eat, the way we order food, the way we order transport, the way we entertain ourselves, and particularly the way we work, it's all been transformed by digital technologies. Now, the important thing about this is, if you think about it, it's all enabled by connectivity. You can't order an Uber if you haven't got a signal. And that's where the operators come in. Yes, and you can't work from home if you haven't got mobile broadband. Correct. So, Operators are absolutely essential for the growth, the digital growth of society. So that's part of it. You know, they have to be there to support us. But then the second thing is it represents a great business opportunity to them. You know, there's a wide open canvas for them to really spread their technology. So they have to be then in a good place to really seize that opportunity. So they've actually got to do digital transformation themselves so they can deliver all the great bandwidth we need without their costs escalating out of control. So really there's two facets to it. Digital transformation is important for society and the operators need to support that. And it's important for the operators themselves in actually enabling them to support what society needs. So it's two sides of the same coin, really. I totally understand that, but digital transformation, all these um, operators, they are transforming already for 10 years, 15 years to more a digital mm. type of approach. Yes. What's now different from 2023? Um, for 2020, I tell you what's really making the difference. It's the growth of data. The data that we now have available about, the, the operators have available about their operations, the way their operations are performing, and also about their customers. Mm -hmm. uh, they know so much, they have so much more data available to them now, they can really exploit that data to make better business decisions and to treat their customers better, give customers better experiences, and really target services at what customers really need. And that is, that, that's really what's done. The explosion of data over the past couple of years, partnered with increasing the increasing capabilities of AI, machine learning, all of that has come together in a kind of virtuous, almost virtuous circle to really open up capabilities that we could talk about five years ago and promise five years ago, but in 2023, it's really being delivered. So that's the big difference. Data monetization, that's the key word then, to bring well, value. I mean, I would say data monetization, certainly internally, exploiting the data. If, you, if you're going to talk about externally, then that's a whole different can of worms, but certainly exploiting the data within the business, making better business, business decisions. For example, predicting when a base site is going to fail. Okay. So it doesn't fail, you can go and maintain it before the failure occurs. All of these things are now use cases that can be uh, delivered to operators. To optimize the network. Absolutely. And, and now operators have the data that know if you drop a call and have a bad experience, they know about it yeah. and they can take action. And with the latest AI technology, the system itself can usually detect the problem and correct it without even human intervention. Yeah. In maybe 70% of cases, we can do that. So it's, it's actually transforming the scope of the operator's operations. They can deliver so much more without their costs escalating. So it's, it's, it's tremendously exciting, this field, actually. Oh, that yeah. definitely yeah. is. And we have uh, many booths over here. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. going to the first one, which is Unleash the Transformation Value. Let's discuss more about everything, anytime, anywhere, and anyone. Of course, okay. okay. Yeah? All right, let's go here. <clears throat> So, Jonathan, we have here anytime, anywhere, anyone. And we were talking about data monetization for the operators. How does it relate to this? Well, one of the aspects, I, when I was talking earlier about digital transformation, I was focusing very much on the operational part and capabilities. But what it also does is opens up many new business op opportunities to the network operators. So they don't just get their revenue from pure connectivity. They can add additional services to what they can offer the consumer and the business to really grow their income. And we've got three examples of that on the screen here. So the first one we're showing is fintech. Now in certain markets, things such as e-wallet, microfinance, and easy payment services are, are 
still a, a, a key requirement in certain underdeveloped markets. So introducing fintech services for those operators is, can be a, a, a real revenue generator. Not only does it help the operator, of course, it means that the, the uh, consumers now have a convenient way of making payments. And we say any time because, of course, fintech is always on. 24-7, yeah. you can pay a bill, you can get a loan, you don't have to wait for the banks to open. I mean, for us in the West, it's probably second nature now. But in some developed countries, that's an important capability to deliver. So that's what we really mean by any time. Okay. When we talk about anywhere, this really refers to the opportunities that cloud-based services offer. Now, remember, with cloud-based services, you're not running the application on your computer anymore or on your phone. It's all being run on a server, a data center up in the cloud. What that means is as long as you have the connectivity, you see, we're coming back to connectivity again, which the network operators provide. If you have the connectivity to the cloud, all those cloud services are available to you again, anywhere, anytime. So for example, you can watch Netflix wherever you happen to be. And why can you do that? Because it's all on the cloud. You can access it anytime, anywhere. And most of the services you, you access on a day-to-day -day basis will be cloud-based. So, and now the operators can run their own cloud networks and support their own services through a cloud platform as a service solution. Okay. So that's the anywhere. Final part of it is anyone. Now this refers actually to the way we offer converged billing services. Now, now this might seem, well, what's that? That sounds a bit boring. But actually it's a real headache for operators. If they're, if they're trying to bundle uh, maybe mobile service, broadband service, maybe they're for a video service, maybe a mu music download service. Trying to bundle all that together into a single bill is an absolute nightmare. Because different solutions, different providers, trying to give a single bill that the, the consumer can understand, absolute nightmare. With our converged billing solution, they can bundle these services together really quickly in a matter of hours and have a nice elegant bill available to the consumer. So if suddenly they want to introduce a new service, instead of it taking three months to get everything in place, the billing, billing into connectivity and all of that, they can do it extremely quickly with this service. And, that's, and we can then offer that easily to anyone and the services they need. They can have their bundle that suits them. That it do, it's not constrained by how they build. I want this, I want that, I want this one. We can bundle it together, give them one simple bill matching anyone's needs. And there's not okay. a single end user who wants multiple bills. Everybody's happy just with one bill in general. One simple bill, actually. That and for the operators, it's great value delivering all different kinds of new services. It's great value and also it increases stickiness. Yeah. Because of course, if you get three or four services from the same operator, it tends to build your loyalty because everything's coming from the same place. And it's actually, they almost call it an exit barrier because it tends, it will be hard to move your TV service, your broadband, your mobile, maybe it's linked to a Netflix subscription. You know, you can imagine it really does tend to engender loyalty with the customer. That makes me very curious and I want to see some cases. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So another great example I'd like to share with you is AAS in Thailand. They've been extremely successful in introducing new services to grow their revenues. So maybe Pong Saturn, you can explain a bit more about what you've been doing? Yeah, yeah. for our AS business, yeah, we provide, we use the digital in fact, uh, transformation to close the revenues. Mm -hmm. yeah, and also uh, we are the number one for the 5G business. Yeah. And we use the 5G to apply the smart mining use case, smart manufacturing use case. Yeah. Okay. And can you explain a little bit more from a perspective from what kind of value you bring to your end clients? Yeah, we provide um, low latency use case so the customer can can use can reduce the cost. Yeah, because the use case that we provide is uh, unmanned um, truck and equator with remote control. So they, get, uh, they, they have no need to uh, have the human to control the, the, the truck. So that's why they can cost saving. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Let's go to the next uh, station, Jonathan. All right, Thank thanks. You. Thanks. So, so, so Jonathan, explain me a little bit more of background well, of this, this case. So, 
what we saw there actually was two great examples of growing uh, operator revenues in a non-traditional way. Mm -hmm. So we saw connected cars and we also saw about moving 5G into a factory environment. So these are both new revenue opportunities that weren't open to network operators before. Yeah. And AIS have been very successful on seizing those opportunities. Great. Let's go to an African case. Okay. AIS was great insights of this, this operator case. But now we're going to Ethio Telecom. And of course, in Africa, it's a totally different situation. Can you explain? So Ronald, we were speaking earlier about fintech opportunities for operators. What I'd like to do now is introduce you to Saeed, who's Chief Marketing Officer with Ethio Telecom. And he can explain a really good fintech use case to you. Saeed. Saeed, listening. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thanks. really curious to your case. Thank you so much. Uh, at Ethio Telecom, uh, May 2021, uh, you know, we come up with a long journey to get uh, mobile money approval for mm -hmm. the operator. So we have got uh, a, a license from uh, the uh, National Bank of Ethiopia mm -hmm. and we launched our mobile money in May 2021. And in May 2021, the, you know, in, it, in our country, the, the banking, the unbanked versus the bank, the difference was a huge, I mean, 65% of the customers were not including to the financial inclusion. So, so they uh, don't, have, don't have a bank account. Yes, and they don't have bank account. And, okay. they, and more than 65 million customers at that time, they were connected to mobile. Okay. So we come up with our mobile financial service mm -hmm. called Telever to connect these 65 million customers to the financial service. And how far are you today? Okay, so I think, you know, we have gone through four steps. You know, okay. we are at the fourth step now. The first step was the user adoption. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on the user adoption, we come up with uh, aggressive uh, marketing campaigns and uh, uh, promotions to bring this uh, massive customer base to mobile money uh, service. Currently, we are having uh, 29.1 million customers in 18, 18 months. Yeah, correct. So uh, the second step was, you know, uh, transaction growth, you know, increasing the volume of transaction into our platform. Mm -hmm. So for this, we try to work with the ecosystem, the tech society, the fintech society, the banks, the government, B2B, and B2C technology providers, bringing them to our ecosystem and then making cap giving them capability to reach to their customers. So doing this, we are really increasing the transaction. Recently, within 19 months, we are able to reach more than 3.5 billion dollar transaction into with this platform just in very less impressive than two, yes very aggressive and also the transaction volume is growing from time to time mm -hmm. the third wave was uh, fi fintech financial service you know in ethiopia the financial the loan saving micro credits micro saving and uh, you know um, uh, uh, overdraft service was nowhere just only traditional credits so we come up with our localized uh, Mela, Ndekise, and uh, uh, Sanduk services is localized naming. And with this, we are able to reach 1.2 million customers. You know, across, you know, like for the last centuries, the banks were not able to reach more than 500,000. But even within less than six, six months, we are able to give credit for 1.2 million uh, customers. It's impressive. really amazing and impressive result uh, in terms of, I mean, short time and with the reach of 1.2 million customers. The fourth phase now we are is, you know, bringing the super app to the ecosystem. We okay. are finalizing, we are finalizing our super app very soon. In less than one month's time, we will come up with our own super app, which allows to have a mini app, which allows all the ecosystem to be in our application so that they, you don't need to open many applications. You just open Telever and you can finalize all the transactions. So, this is all in all what we are doing uh, about Telever in our family. An amazing case, but I want to understand as well, how is partnership working with Huawei? Yeah, in fact, you know, we launched this service with Huawei. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, they are really at our back helping Ethio Telecom, you know, achieving all, you know, helping us on the TTM, helping us on the new, you know, customization and, and the new product and service development, even sharing us the experience in the world. So we really work hand in hand with Huawei uh, in launching all our services. Amazing case. All right.
we're going to the next station. Said, thanks a lot. Thank you so and, much. And uh, we're going to the next one. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, Jonathan, let's go to the next one. So I mentioned earlier on the value of data. You asked me how digital transformation was accelerating. Yeah. I said one of the things is data is increasing and we can now measure and evaluate the experience of every single user on the network and the services they use. So the final case I'd like to introduce you to actually is with Telecom Argentina. Mm -hmm. And they've used the measurement of their customers' experience to really drive their business growth. Now, I think my good friend Nicholas can actually tell you a bit more about that case. Hi, Ronald. Good Hi, to Nicholas. meet you. Hi. How are you? Hey. I'm good, thanks. I'm okay. So, okay. Yeah, I'm looking what, forward to your case from yes, the customer what, experience perspective. What comes to my mind, and the, the recurrent question we have in our heads is how to improve customer experience, which is important. And the short answer is to understand the client and act accordingly. At the end of the day, we won't be able to understand the perception of customer experience unless we fully understand the experience our customer has each time they go video streaming, music streaming, gaming, and so on. That's the interest of our customer. So, in order to fill this gap as our customer expectations evolve, we realized it was not longer okay to measure network APIs to see our own infrastructure, but we have to see our service through our client's perspective, through their point of view. So in order to do so, we created a series of, of tools, of indicators that we call customer experiences that basically can describe as a group of relevant KPIs gathered into KQIs, fitted into a model cross-referenced by groups of clients, trained and supervised by MPS or by claims to our contacts. And being Telecom, a company with a wide spectrum of services, we find a rather eclectic challenge producing these indicators for HFC networks, mobile networks, each, uh, fiber to the home networks, sorry, and flow our media platform. And now this consolidated information that give us a good idea of the experience that customers have regarding our services and the perception of quality they have, we use these indicators on a daily show basis to make decisions and to improve our networks and our systems and our processes, not from our standards, but from client-defined standards, running the path to become a data-driven, customer-centric company. And can you give some examples from what type of data you collect and how you convert it into the definition of experience? Absolutely. For example, when you think in mobile networks and in field networks, it's basically, basically the same. We have to use our original KPIs, I mean network performance, but this has no meaning unless we get information of service performance. By this, I mean what experience and what quality of service clients have when we have video, and music, and gaming over our network. For each client, we have a different definition of importance. For example, a gamer is terribly sensitive to latency, and we have to understand these KPIs of the network through the customer experience, not just thinking in our original design, but evolving it in order to fulfill the requirements and to fill the expectations of the customer. Correct. So, Nicholas, thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. We end with the customer experience, which is the most important thing for the end user in the end, and that's why we're doing all this. Jonathan, thanks a lot for this great tour that you gave us, great cases, and deep insights in how this transformation is important for the operator. And for the audience, Thank you for joining us at this tour here at Mobile World Congress and we're looking forward to seeing you next time.